word. Welcome to the B-Side Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I'm Devon and I'm here with Emma. Hi. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with <laughs> number one thief, Alexander. <laughs> Ahoy! Yeah, the pirate. <laughs> the pirate. The uh, protein flapjack pirate. <laughs> That's a hell of a name. Protein <laughs> flapjack hijack what are, thief. What are PFP. protein flapjacks? PFP. Like they pancakes. Are, yeah. You know what a flapjack is, right? It's like the oats. It's kind of like a muesli bar. No. Okay. Flapjacks are no, they're pancakes. Not. It's... What? What? No, no they're, they're like butter. They're like oat butter goody goodness things. Yeah, like oh. a like a How muesli do, bar. Do they, not, do they not have flapjacks in? They're muesli America, bars in Australia. No, I'm looking. No, they're not a muesli bar. It's very similar. No, it's not. Oh yeah. Do they're, they not have? They're not. They're not pancakes. I did not mean to cause an argument. They're not pancakes. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yeah, flapjacks or granola bars, as close to healthy food as it gets but a, a, a flapjack is like soft because it's like buttery uh muesli bar or what do you call them they're like hard and crunchy no they're not all some of them are soft aren't they oh if but i mean like, the answers, i get what no, you mean <laughs> they're, they're muesli bars but they're just like homemade more aren't they mm. Mm. Anyways, that flat looks anyways, crunchier. what's our first topic? Oh, okay. Who wants to go to Utopia? Me. <laughs> Me. Yeah, I just want to leave the house, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, think it's over, I think it's overhyped. So there's this place, Deb, you put this in, um, in, in um, India. Yeah. I it's, don't know if it's around there. I don't know if it's still around. I think it is. Is it? Don't know. Can you have a look? Wait, um, can I ask the guys first? What is your um what is your ideal utopian place? What is what do you see when you hear utopia? What is your vision for utopia? That's what I want to get asked. What is your vision for utopia? I refuse to answer that question on this podcast in the case it might incriminate me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you're he's... you're pledging your Fifth Amendment. Is that what it is? He is, he hasn't got any yes, amendments. Uh, utopia for CJ is a lot of illegal stuff. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not illegal. I just want to be. I don't. I don't want to be. Um, you know, made disappear. Oh, uh, you know, what? cancel culture. What the cancel, cancel culture? culture? Like, yeah. I don't even want to get no, into yeah, it. I don't even understand. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm intrigued I, by his utopia. Yeah, I'm slightly concerned, actually. <laughs> <laughs> My utopia is a world where we all live like the current billionaires live. But nothing changes as far it's not like we're all a billionaire so really we're all broke because we all have this no like we actually have the access to the experience that a billionaire has now but we all have it oh that would be a bit nice that would be a bit nice who would who would, then you, you who could would curate serve us the life you want who would yeah. serve us then no, but don't don't ask questions. That's okay. not how Utopia works. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking logistics here. So who's gonna bring every, me my pancakes? Everyone's a billionaire. Um, <laughs> sir, would you? No, I have my own money. <laughs> <laughs> Even the waiters are rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh. Hmm. We all look, we'll invent something that does everything for us without it being well if we've all got money we'd be able to okay invent stop it them. we're not doing logistics everyone <laughs> lives like a billion no i'm saying we'd all be able yeah, to put in and invent you have to have some sort of poor people we not again <laughs> again guys, we're not doing logistics do you remember how uh, Alexa um alexander you know where you get your um people that serve you from cj's utopia he has a lot of <laughs> <laughs> 
I was going to say, probably could. Um, honey, I Look, shrunk the kid. I broke a spare couple. And that contraption <laughs> that makes breakfast. Maybe. What? Is that in Maybe. Honey, I shrunk the kids? Oh, my gosh. Why wouldn't you use the Jetsons? Maybe. Yeah. Well, see, the book I read, it, there's a talk about making robot slaves it could be just as bad as making human slaves but oh maybe hold on for my hold utopia on. to exist maybe we just discover magic oh and maybe magic serves us okay that needs to happen yeah how? that needs to happen okay if everyone discovers magic how yeah. are we going to like make food have poos on a farm who's on a you know, sort of food. No, it's magic. Com- <laughs> I feel like you're would, yeah. not understanding the concept of magic. <laughs> magic, so like it just appears. <laughs> like, oh, like magic, magic food. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I want a steak. Yeah. Yeah, like a genie. That's right. That's just like that. <laughs> you don't need to bow your head <laughs> and cross your arms. <laughs> Uh, tell us about the article, Emma. Oh, right. I don't even know if you read it fully, did you? No. Oh, no. You might be a bit disappointed. No. Um, Never disappointed. So, the, this place is called Oroville. Oroville? Oroville. I like um, that name. It's, it's, that means the City of Dawn. Now, it's near Pondicherry, which is um, off the Bay of Bengal. Three side hour- note. Can I just put a side note? Because that popped into my head right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, um, Star Wars. Yes. Um, it's, it's, um, the plot is revealed very, very early on. Like the ending. How did you you get here? With, (laughs) with Darth Vader. Because Darth in um in an um i think it's in german i think is dark and vader in german is father dark, dark yeah, father. But father it was but already I, revealed I'm fairly confident that's not actually a german translation vader is dad yeah. vader thing. is dad in uh, it's fa- not no, vader but, um, i thought it was father father <laughs> dark father <laughs> Mine it's Vata. Ve- oh, it's Vata. Yeah, Vata. F- Vata. V A T E. Yeah, they just changed the T to the D. And then they said, oh. Oh, That changes the whole word. It doesn't. Look, <laughs> look it up. Look it up on things. It does. I, Vata I, and Vader are different. Look, words. Da- oh, sorry. It's Dutch. Sorry. It's not German. It's Dutch. Oh. Dutch is Vada. Vada. Sorry, not German. You sure the guy that didn't have a speech impediment <laughs> and couldn't <laughs> say father? <laughs> so yeah, anyways, continue with this story. Yeah, hopefully my, my laptop's doing funny things and like sh- trying to shut down on me. But um, so this is a three hour flight from Delhi to Chennai and then a three hour bus ride from Chennai to Pondicherry and Auroville is just near Pondicherry or yeah. in Pondicherry. I don't know. Anyway. Pondicherry sounds like a dessert. I like that. I'd like that as a uh, cafe, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's like it's like a, a cool dessert name. Where are you going? Pondicherry. I'm just going to the Pondicherry. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the name. So I like this place already. Continue. So anyway, this the idea for Oroville, and I'll get into what what is it was inspired by. Um, it was it was founded in 1968 by Mira Alfassa. I like um, this guy's name as well. Yeah, that's a, a French woman oh. known locally as the Mother. Mm. Now, um, so she had a. Oh, is she the mother? She, the mother had a the close father. and secretive relationship with an Indian philosopher and yoga guru, hmm. Sri Aurobindo. 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 Um, now, he was born in 1872 in Kolkata, um, educated at Cambridge in England, blah, blah, blah. He was like, I guess, a. Um, he was a active citizen campaigner he campaigned for he was an he, activist yes or an active citizen both oh. and he he started the go home british campaign in calcutta right um he was in prison and that was after uh, then he was imprisoned mm-hmm. by the british mm-hmm. um in 1908 sought political asylum in um the french colony of pondicherry um and then he converted from a political figure into a leading spiritual guru. I wonder what happened there. Hmm. Maybe he figured that he couldn't influence people through the politics, so he decided to attack them. Oh. Attack 
through the spiritual where they're weak. Wow. Well, he said he wanted mm-hmm. to awaken the soul yeah. of India. He saw the he saw the gap in the market. Hey? Now, the mother, which was his secret relationship lady, French. That's not very spiritual to have a secret. Anyways, continue. Yeah, that's interesting. She turned his ideas into an international project, um, basically. So um, she wanted to realize human unity and establish an ideal society. So on 28th of February, 1968, more than 5,000 people from 104 different countries basically came to this Auroville. To... Now, at the time, it was a desolate red desert. There was nothing. There was no buildings, nothing. Um, they all carried their own flags um, and soil from their home countries. And the mother said this would create a new consciousness. Now... Basically, Auroville has no government, no money, no religion, no skyscrapers or expressways, no newspapers, no um, poverty, no nothing. That's what it's, you know, that's, wow. that's, what, they, okay. that's what it's supposed yeah. to have. It's sounding good, right? It was built for 50,000 people. Um, today only I'm has about 2,500 permanent residents and then about 5,000 visitors. Um so a lot of people go there and maybe just stay for like a few weeks or a few months or some people stay for years or you can apply for residency to stay there permanently as well. We have to ask, we pass this process. Um, but um, yeah, so that's what it was. Sounds pretty good to be honest. Now it does get a lot of government donations, more than 200,000 every year. In government donations. That's, that's still not enough. That's still not that that is much not money enough. for all those people. No. And yeah. the UNESCO um, has basically made it a protected township. Who's and UNESCO? That. UNESCO? Is it UNESCO? What does it, it stand for? UNESCO. I um, ESCO. UNESCO I like, is I like ESCO. the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. They, they are the governing body of protected sites. So it's basically a protected site. But this place of utopia isn't what it seems. No, nothing does. So... What was what, the downside? Well, this lady, this is the lady's article. She actually visited there. She wanted to sort of, you know, get... She was, she was writing about it, basically. And she... So she goes there, finds her way there, Um and she has a lady that I guess is going to be her buddy, if you her want to put it like that, her yeah. guide. Um, and the lady said to her, you need to watch yourself um, because it's not safe for women to be out by themselves. Um, so uh, there's something like 35 different entryways into this place and there's lots of villages surrounding it. So a lot of the, there's been rapes and murders even, but they say it's caused from the outside villages, basically, um, which is a bit. Well, what are you saying? The outside villages are infiltrating into the utopia, mm. but the utopia itself, there's no actual. Well, that they they basic because it's non gated community. They didn't say the incidents, the bad incidents have happened from the actual people that are living there themselves, but there were local villagers that did commit crimes and they were sentenced and imprisoned. Um, not in the utopia outside of the utopia no they came into the utopia and committed the crimes inside. yeah but they weren't they weren't living there they weren't like residents no but they weren't um judged in the utopia no they were judged in their probably in india in india yeah. right okay um but there's been suicide and stuff as well um but basically also the way that you can try and join this place is the mother would look you in the eye, looking you in the eye, and decide whether you, whether just by looking into your soul, whether she would approve you or not. And then with a single nod of the head, you'd be newly ordained and then you have to go plant a tree. Now, there's no money, but they force you to, to buy this plastic card, which I guess counts as money. 
and all the shops and stuff are like on the outskirts and this this girl that's writing this story went to go pay with this card thing and they're like no we don't take it give me cash instead and she's like oh okay so she gave money went to another place waved this card and they're like no we don't take it give me cash she's like oh okay so she's like what is this thing for (laughs) and they're like i don't know so there's these all ideals but they're not actually taking place and also she had to pay 40 one of the people had to pay forty eight thousand dollars for a property and but there's no money there's no bank so she's like where is whose money does this go to where is this money going because she later saw that same house in an international article saying it was sold for about twenty thousand so there was like twenty thousand missing she's like well where's the extra money because actually i paid forty something thousand so no one could she tried to find out where where does the money that residents pay go because if you want to stay there there's a minimum daily cost as well but they say whatever else you feel you want to pay this is just the minimum we don't there's no fee as such but whatever you think is appropriate you pay us but it doesn't go anywhere. Who? So who's handling the money is what they're saying. The mother. So who? The mother. The, mother. the, the lady. I don't, now, yeah. I don't know if the mother's still alive or not. I didn't find that out. It didn't actually mention it. Whoever's in charge of the place is taking a portion of it. Hmm. But basically, um, you know, a lot of people are loving it there, but other people just like the energy here. It's really harsh at times. You can basically just get stuck in a dark loop. And it's really hard to get out, like, alone. So how do we feel about it now? Pause the podcast. Okay, if you are listening on your phone, pick it up right now. Go on to your Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, get us at the B-Side Word. And did you know that we actually record these with video as well? You can find us on YouTube, again, at the B-Side Word. And we would love it if you subscribe. A, 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 I can't even speak. A subscribe. Hey, yeah, there we that's go. The and remix. If you want, you can leave us some comments. We love to engage. <laughs> And you know S- what? S- Let S- me S- ask S- you this. If you do follow us on any of these already, what is it you would like to see from us? Leave us some comments. Let us know. Oh, what, he said. what he said. What he said. Subscribe. I can't say the word for some reason. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> and pause the podcast. I mean, this uh, uh, Dev saw caught me early. I wasn't necessarily enticed by the idea to start with. I think... The problem with something like this is, yes, ideally that could work, but in a completely isolated situation. But unfortunately, they live in the world. Um, Mm. So one of two things is going to happen. Either someone in that community is going to take advantage of the people there, or someone from outside of that community is going to take advantage of the people there. And apparently both are happening. So yeah, yeah, I don't... I don't I wonder, know how you actually make it work. I wonder if if you get babies, and this is like effed up, but you get all the babies, right? And you get, uh, how many people were there? 5,000? Mm. And they, care, they get cared for equally, and they rate, all, all they know is the utopian way. Isolated. So mm. they've got no preconceptions. And they the, all all they got all they've been raised up on is the ideals of that utopia. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that I, I, program we watched where they have to take the um, that little pill every time they feel a bit anxious, and they all have assigned roles. You still gonna get it outside? No, you isolated, yeah, I th- isolated. Like Alexander said, isolated, brand new. But eventually, someone will go there to try to take advantage of them. Because mm. I know, it's, it's yeah, like because humans uh, are assholes. Other than the modern implementation, as in like there are shops and houses and stuff. This is just how society started. Yeah, like right. not having newspaper. Like th- that is, but someone will always take advantage because we're not all wired the same. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, he- human nature, like. Uh, <laughs> Human nature is just to survive, right? Their their basic instinct is to survive at all costs. Whether it's yeah, you don't know until like your house is or your living is disrupted in some way. It's kind of interesting. Humans are stupid. And uh, really? our, dis- our our sort of method of survival are going to be different individually yeah. as well. Like what we 
and how we perceive what survival even means to, yeah. like, to ourselves. Like, maybe, maybe we just have to get the idea of utopia out of our head and realize we are living in utopia. Yeah, I mean, if you if you asked people from probably even 300 years ago and showed them the world we live in today, they'd probably go, yeah, that's utopia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And no doubt, if we got to see what the world is in 300 years, if we're all still alive. So, yeah. so, you know, CJ, do you think we're if... living in utopia? <laughs> <laughs> CJ? Yeah? Do you think we're living in utopia? I'm thinking. Oh. <laughs> Does it hurt? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, My pleasure. Yeah. So basically, no. there is crime and corruption. Is basically the 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 message. Yeah. And she, they had this like town hall crime. thing, and she was thinking when she first went there that it would be nothing like what normal civilization is type thing so she went in and it was exactly like a normal town hall thing there was like desks office desks and p- queues of people lining up and you know she's like oh this looks, looks normal I, to me i mean take okay. take humans out of this picture right if you think about whenever you have more than one of something living beings you immediately have a power structure yeah whenever whenever you have power you have corruption so think like a pride of lions for example yeah like it's not corruption in the way that we see corruption because we think of money but the the head of the pack like that that guy who's got all of his wives and everything like he's he's pretty corrupt as a lion you know compared to the other male lions in the bride so i just don't think if you have living beings I just don't see how you avoid these kinds of things. Yeah. Mm. yeah it's, uh, if they live in, thinking. if they live in communities, that yeah. is. Like, as I said, if, if you're isolated by yourself, you can't be corrupt. You can't have power structure, but as soon as you have more than one, you immediately have a dynamic, which has power inherently. Hmm. Hmm. Because even even when we, when we see the tribes and stuff, right, they have a hierarchy straight away, don't they? Yeah. It's like it's necessary for people for people to survive. Because some people like what? to follow, and some people like to lead. I saw lead, a, yeah. um African and- tribe. I can't remember which tribe it was. It was such a good documentary, and um they would settle their um. It's actually an older type of documentary, but there was issues with 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 different tribes so one tribe there was a lot of just violence because and it was uh, to do with the, their land borders um so they'd just attack each other because someone had you know taken a cow or stolen their cows or killed the cow or whatever um and they have like massive i guess town town hall meetings about it in the grass but um there would be different tribes from this different groups from the same tribe that would like travel up to have these big you know meetings only the men can talk so the women aren't allowed they can listen from far away um so they're not allowed and this is just a tribe um and then there's no actually there was no sort of hierarchy they said within that group but you it was just an unspoken thing where you you can get up and talk but you can only talk for a sort of certain amount of time and then the people that were good at talking would always be sort of expected to talk as well. It was so interesting how they did that because they said there wasn't any hierarchy as such, but it was still very organized and still rules to it. But then, like you said, the ones who were good at talking were expected to yeah, talk. Right. So mm. even though there may and not they, be a and, defined hierarchy, they're just yes. naturally is. And the ones that were like talking, because there was this guy that's a – he – in their village, they have like your chief or whatever you call. <coughs> That's the hierarchy. Me. But when they're talking, it's different. Like this guy wasn't really high up in the village. Um, but yeah, he was just a, a good talker. And he and his was always the last, the last um, word. word of the day, basically. Um, 
And sometimes they went for like a long time, these meetings, and sometimes they didn't have a resolution, but it, they're sort of just nutting it out. You know, um, you know uh, Emma brought up unspoken rules. I f- freaking hate that. I freaking hate unspoken rules because you don't know. Why? Would you prefer them to be spoken? Yes. Lay them down. Yeah. Have the rules. Lay them out. Have the rules laid out. But a lot of unspoken rules are just basically common sense. Not everywhere. So it's no, no, they're not, they're common, not common sense. <laughs> Okay, it's a rule like, for that Don't place. shit in a pool. Don't poo in a pool. You're very that's pretty sure that's an very, actual rule. <laughs> that's a that's yeah, that's a rule. Peeing and shitting in a pool is a rule. Isn't that an unspoken There's rule? There's loads no. of unspoken no, that's, rules. That's rule. There's loads and loads of unspoken rules in prisons, isn't there? Because the, the new prisoner has no idea what the rules are. <laughs> no, I'll give you an example. All right, so like, let's say you're in the basketball game and one team smashes you. Right, there's an yeah. unspoken rule where you let the last 24 hours run down or something before 24 hours, 24 24 24 hours. seconds, <laughs> 24 seconds. Is that a rule? Uh, unspoken that was rule. Twenty-four hours. I wouldn't lose. Yeah, it. yeah. So if you're, if you're, I mean, typically just if you're winning anyway and you have the ball at the end of the game, don't, you don't need to go and score. Yeah, yeah. That's an unspoken rule. Okay. Yeah, but like shitting in a. In the pool, that's that's a written rule. <laughs> I feel it's an unspoken well rule. Like, there's no signs saying don't shit in the pool. <laughs> so it's unspoken. <laughs> I mean, he's right. I've never seen a sign that actually says oh, that. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. We are yeah. not. Have, have not you seen a sign that says... <laughs> like, don't pee and don't shit in the pool. Yeah, I've definitely seen don't pee in the pool. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that, I think. Have you seen don't poo in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? I mean, uh, isn't public defecation have you seen just it? against the law in general? <laughs> yeah, it's against... <laughs> but, but, yeah, but have you seen the sign? <laughs> We're in the mud. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> then it's an unspoken rule. And I'm right, so... <laughs> <laughs> so... Utopia. Uh, I just th- there's been so many versions of Utopia, haven't there? There's really? Been... And what versions? I, like I mean, I- ideologies sh- of Utopia. Many. That's the thing is you saw oh. by just even your question at the beginning, me and Siege, like our definitions of obviously very different. Yeah. Which means how do you then being being that a Utopia is a community driven thing. How do you possibly create that if everyone's vision of it is different? Anyway, if if mm. you did want to see more about this, there are you can actually um the we'll post the article. There's a video, and I think it's a lady who lives there, a young US US uh, college student, maybe I think went there for a little bit. Um, and there's probably heaps on YouTube, but it looks interesting. So- Guys. I've sent you an article. Can you just all pull it up and look at the picture? And I want to know your thoughts. What I have sent... I'm kind of built like that in, in a human way. Just all is muscle. a picture of a Belgian blue bull. Jesus. It's a bull and they're called Belgian blues. Now, I guess this picture, this there was a video of this bull. It went viral in pictures. And people are up in arms because this bull is huge. They're up in arms? I'm not talking about size as in, well, yes, actually it is huge in size as well. I think it's about eight, six foot four. CJ. And what? But C- its muscles yeah. are CJ, like. Can you go to the picture? Yeah. And tell me what you see? Yeah. I see. <laughs> you know what I see. <laughs> tell, me what, tell me what you see. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you saw? <laughs> to be honest with you, the first thing I saw was like this: this bull was shredded. Yeah. And now that you said, uh, CJ, have a look at the picture. Yeah. Uh, what did you see? <laughs> Tell me what you saw. I see massive testicles. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bull. Like, is I didn't notice them originally. Shredded. Until you you bring it up. So why are they up in arms, um, Ems? 
So when you look at the picture, it looks like a, you know, one of those bodybuilders. Yeah. But the ones where they have like yeah. no neck and nothing. Like, I mean, all you see is just, just muscle, muscle on muscle on muscle on muscle. So they were saying that people were saying that they, that someone's inj- injecting this ball with steroids. And are they? No. They're not. It has a mutation which where it's missing a protein which controls the muscle growth according to the charity um, that wow. has it. That, um, it looks it's like it's called, got all the protein in the world, to be honest with you. That's how big it is. I think it's called double, mus- double muscling or something. I have to Jeez. check that. Um, but it, apparently it is natural, but it occurs more commonly in farms where um, the mutation is basically selectively bred because they want it to be like that. They want to produce more f- more meat. Is this nice meat, having all muscle? But this particular bull was spared. So I think he was sent to get, you know, butchered, but it was just too big. They couldn't do it. It was too big. So they were like, all right, we will spare you. Man, he was he was at the gym going, if I tank up, they're not going to kill me. So, so he, man, like this guy's, this bull's huge. And he's obviously not doing any weights. <laughs> he's obviously not going to the gym, know? right? But he has muscle in his buttocks above his neck. Yeah. This is incredible. So you're saying if there is, if like we translate to humans, mm. is there a possibility that we can get muscles by turning off that protein for a bit? Maybe. Or does it always have to be off? So that we keep feeding the muscles. Well, he's missing the protein, so no, I that's guess what it means. always so has he's... to be off. But yeah, this 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 bull, as I said, six foot tall. Look at his butter. Two hundred and twenty stone. The guy's, seven years old. The guy's got at mus- this bull's bum for because <laughs> he's got muscle on his butt. Like, have you seen his bum? <laughs> yeah, I haven't brung it up thirty times. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I've never seen a bull. If you if you look at the picture of this bull, Dev, you're gonna have to post it. Uh, standing next to the other bull friends. Oh my gosh! He's like, he's like that's the- when you really see the size. It's wild. Hmm. What do you think, um, Alexander? So I've seen these before, like mm-hmm. these giant bulls. Um, my question I wrestle with in my head is if I was dropped into a field with one of these, would I run? Because <laughs> yes. half of me is like, this is the most terrifying thing I could be dropped in a field with. But then half of me is also like, this thing probably cannot run. Or do you reckon? It's 220 stone. Like, that's massive. What's that in kilos? <laughs> I'll have a look. Uh, it's it's a 1,400 yeah, he can't yes. run. He can't 1, run. 1,400 <laughs> kilograms. Oh, what the hell? He's over a ton. Imagine if he can run. Like, yeah, but he can't size, turn. That's... He'll have to step oh, yeah, in you, once. I, 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 so I you just do zigzags. You'd, <laughs> yeah. no, you'd, no, you'd run. You'd run, you'd run, you'd run. You'd get him up to his full speed and then you would turn. Yeah. Because then he would just keep going. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's wild though, isn't it? Can I just, because talking about weight, I was watching um, just a geographic um, doco with the kids and we and it was saying about blue whales, a blue whale's tongue, tongue, just the tongue, weighs more than an elephant. Wow. I was like, what? The canvas bull walks. His butt cheeks are massive, man. <laughs> like, you, you, keep, like bum. you keep talking about the bum and this is gonna sp- it just it reminds me of the kardashian bum because <laughs> <laughs> it's so oversized for its legs <laughs> it is because the legs are still tiny <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how his poor legs cope he must have really bad joint pain well no so if you look at the legs of 
animals like this like what we think and you look at is the knee that's actually their ankle so most of their most of his leg is muscled it's just hidden oh, under the right. legs of other muscle right 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 got you so so this blue um this belgian blue they usually get eaten these bulls i mean maybe they don't grow quite as big i don't know maybe they do but it said like usually they're they're pretty rare, but you might find more of them on yeah because on I've, a farm I've, where they keep I've heard them. of wagyu right wagyu wag wagyu, and they're known for their fat. Are they known for their fat wagyu? I don't know what it is. Why are they why are they so good? Um, I can't remember. What's the the in between the marble the marble of the meat marbling yeah yeah. But distinctive because it's, it's, it's highly isn't marbled, that just fat marbled. 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 That's what I thought. But um Yeah. But the Belgian Belgian bull here is full of muscle. And I know muscle yeah. isn't good to like I thought it was tough. I've never heard if a butcher at, If you look at Belgian blue steak, I'll see if I can send this picture to you. Yes. Yeah, there is picture. no fat on this. Oh. No. How do you cook a Belgian So blue? Wagyu is distinctive because of the marbling, but the marbling refers to the visible layers of intramuscular fat. That is fat that is found in the muscle. Oh, look at this. Oh. Oh, so that's got none. That's got none. Compared to no Wagyu. No marbling. There's no marbling on this Belgian blue. <sighs> that's why Wagyu must melt in the mouth so much because of the fat. What does this do? Just stay on your tongue. <laughs> They don't melt. <laughs> we've added, we've Mate, had an input from to, Max. Go so straight to the heart. <laughs> <laughs> what the... Maxie, what the F is that? <laughs> <laughs> Maxie is away, but he's seeing our chat, <laughs> chat photos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's so right. funny. So, um... Will you ever try a Belgian blue siege, Alexander? Yeah, yeah. I guess it would be close to a kangaroo, wouldn't it? Kangaroo meat. Oh, the meat. It would be, be, be very lean. You'd have to just quick flat fry it, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, if it was on a plate, yeah, I'd try it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But I don't know necessarily how good it would be. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's one way to find out. Oh, this is Let's tough. Let's find out where we get Belgian blue. Are you going to look it up if you can buy Belgian blue? Yeah. Oh, CJ will let us know on the next podcast how good Belgian blue is. All right, next article. Okay. Okay, personal story. Personal story come article. Wow. Oh, I like that. So this week I took the kids to the beach. We were at the beach all day, six hours straight. <laughs> oh, no. I come home <laughs> oh, no. and I realize like more like a bit later on that ah, oh, my, my, my right foot on top of the foot has been burnt. I've got sunburn. And it, you can only, I could only tell when I like put socks on or something and then it's, ah, it gets that burning sensation. And then the next morning I look and it's all red, like from my ankle down all the way, like on my right foot. Yeah. Just because I was lying there in the sun and that's probably the foot that was on. I don't know. Anyway. So I go, oh, Dev, I got sunburn on my foot. Oh, he's like, yeah, you're not a real, <laughs> should we start, should I say <laughs> oh that? Oh my gosh. Should I say? <laughs> what? You're not black. <laughs> Because black people can't get a sunburn. No, I said they tan. Oh, yeah. So I said you tan. You're not black because you, you're you supposed to tan, not yeah. burn. Because I tan. That's why my sister, my yeah. sister's got the tropical, um, tropical, tropical skin. Tropical, tropical. And we tan. We don't burn, we tan. So I was like. To be honest with you, I, I, I tan as well. So I was yeah, but like. You're from Malta. No, but wait. Yeah, I yeah. Know. So CJ, I actually, doesn't so CJ doesn't, doesn't burn. He tans. So this is the thing. The, the, oh, no, no, hold on. The top of my head burns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so <That's about> <laughs> actually, I I tan usually, yeah. but occasionally I will burn. Um, but it's usually maybe on the bridge of my nose or like my upper cheek area. Um, 
and in this case, my foot. Um, <coughs> anyway, so I thought, let me look into this yeah. plunge because that is a stereotype that black people don't burn. So I got some data. What is it a bad stereotype? Every- no? No, nah, oh. everyone burns. It's not a bad stereotype until you go, well, you're not black because you're supposed to die. <laughs> <laughs> So I've only had <laughs> personal, my personal experience of this. Yeah. I'm like, you said, I tan, I get darker. I've burnt once in my life. And I, yeah. I, this is one time in Florida. This is when I went out to the beach two days in a row all day. And after yeah. that, I realized I'd burnt and I was astounded because I was like, I can't burn. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> See? Alexander will say, no, I had the same. No, I did have the same that thought was the first time I burnt too. So it is a stereotype, but I'm here to break yeah. that stereotype. We ready? Yeah. So, yeah. dermatologist, New York dermatologist, Elise Love, she writes, and this is just a very recent article. She goes, I'll start by saying, I've seen two black patients with sunburns just this morning. So, yes. Black people can burn. (laughs) So they are capable of developing a sunburn. But whilst black and darker skinned individuals are less sensitive to sun, it doesn't mean you're immune to getting a sunburn or cumulative skin damage or even skin cancer. Look at this. Look at my V. Yeah, you, he, you, Dev has a permanent like V from his tra- his tradie uniform, his high vis single- tradie uniform. I remember uniform, to see it because he works the t-shirt all day. Up here, he's bloody white as a. You ghost. should have seen CJ when he used to get sunburned. His boobies used to like really be pronounced because when he took what? his singlet off, because he'd have a singlet burn and it'd be like he, oh. it's like when he took the singlet off, he'd be like, take your singlet off. Take a singlet off. Well, do you, do you remember in New Zealand, I got that singlet tan and that yeah. stayed with me for like a year. <laughs> that was madness. Well, Nate has okay. a tan. He's got a short tan. I, 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 I learned the trick to that. Yeah. When I started roofing, I started taking the shirt off as yeah. well. Singlet as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, then I be, and then I just became white for my hips down. Well, they have a skin phototype scale, which I didn't know. So... They use this scale, dermatologists, I guess, um, and it broadly describes how skin responds to light as a component of skin cancer risk factors. Okay. So um, though it basically goes from those who only burn and never tan, and they're on one end of the spectrum, and those who tan very easily and almost never burn are on the other end of the spectrum. So here we go with the spectrum. Skin phototype one, always burns, never tans. Traditionally, white people of Irish descent fall into that. Mm. Skin phototype two, burns easily, tans with difficulty. Doesn't (laughs) say what falls into that. Skin phototype three, mild burns, tans gradually. So those of Asian and Hispanic descent typically Ah. fall into skin. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry. Take that back. White people of Italian descent fall into skin type three. Ah. That's Siege, um, yeah. CJ. Yeah, so maybe like Mediterranean type. Yeah. Skin phototype <laughs> four rarely burns and tans easily, which is his Asian and Hispanic oh, yeah. typically fall into that. Skin phototype five rare, very rarely burns and tans very easily. Um, and skin phototype six almost never burns and tans very easily. So black people fall into skin five. phototype. What did I say? Five skin, and six. Yeah, five and well, six. Well, yeah. yeah. But yeah. she goes on to say race is a social construct. Blackness comes in many shades and ethnicities. Um, but to, so she just gets that out of the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she said for the rest of what she's going to say, she's speaking more scientific and um, – and like basically discussing the risk of sunburn and skin t- cancer in Fitzpatrick five and Fitzpatrick six individuals. That's that um, just ones for, that we just, just for curiosity. About. An albino African would he burn? Yes. Oh yes. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, because they have to be very careful, and their eyes very sensitive. They're to light very as sensitive well. there. Yep. Just checking because, like you said, black people. So he's still black. He's just yep. albino. Yeah, so that's where the I guess yeah social his, construct comes into play. But his skin color, 
Yeah, but I thought maybe just it's genetic, like the. Oh, like actually, you know what? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, actually. All right, so let's have a look. <laughs> Darker skin tones originate in parts of the world close to the equator, where UV exposure is highest. Melanin absorbs and scatters UV energy in the same way um, to sunscreen, providing number five and number six individuals with a baseline estimate of seven to ten SPF. Right. Seven to ten SPF baseline. So you start at that high level already of yeah. protection. Now, the natural SPF, so we start at seven to ten naturally. Mm those that are in five to six category. Mm. Natural SPF allows the darker skin tones to better tolerate UV exposure and typically results in tanning and without burning. However, you can still develop the sunburn with high sun exposure or use of treatments that make your skin more sensitive to sun, like with um, retinoids or like uh, like um, face creams or if you've had a facial or whatever they've done to your face. And they put it, like you can be really sensitive to the sun then no matter what skin type you are. Right. Um, or rapid changes, so rapid changes in UV exposure. Let's say you go from winter and go on holiday in a hot climate in the Caribbean somewhere, you could get sunburnt then because it's a rapid change. Um, but also darker skin tones, whilst they're less likely to get skin cancers, they still can as well. So melanoma and all this type of stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, Bob Marley got his under his foot, didn't he? Ah, uh, was it under? Yeah, in his foot. Didn't he get? Was it his foot? Who? Bob Marley. Did you say Bob under his foot? I don't know if it was under his foot. I think it was his. Uh, I don't know who, who who's tanning there under? No, foot? it wasn't. No, he had a skin cancer under his foot. Oh, I think. I don't know. Look. So the number of sunburns, by the way that you have as a childhood particularly is a really important risk factor for developing skin cancer later on in life. So, um, and in addition, darker skinned people develop less UV damage from equivalent amounts of sun exposure um, compared to lighter skinned people. But uh, the thing is, if you do have darker skin and you do develop a skin cancer, you're less likely to notice straight away. And therefore, it's diagnosed at a later stage, and then you have a worse outcome. Oh, yeah. Um, it was on his toe. And also, remembering, oh. they said, she said, remember, if you're a five or a six, your baseline is still only your natural baseline is like a equivalent of S SPF seven to ten, oh. which is still far less than the recommended SPF thirty, 30. to, you know, so you still have the yeah, basically, yeah. you still have that risk. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's so interesting that your baseline's ten, ten though. Seven right. to ten. So if you yeah, put a layer was... of sunscreen, you go up to sixty. Ooh. Like the new ones. What the at fifty SPS? Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. I don't. I, I don't think it adds. Oh, does it not? I don't think that's how it works. I thought it would add. No, like if you put on I if you put add. on like a thirty lotion and then put on a, another thirty lotion, you don't have sixty. You still have 30. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying oh, if, yeah. if you rate it as a 10 a, and you put on a 30, it's 40. No, but then. No. Because it's just isn't, it's just a, it's the level of protection you have. So if you have oh, intensity yeah. greater so than 30. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally was like, yeah, yeah, yeah 60. Yeah. But then that makes sense. Yeah. If you were to just have zero, put on a 30 and but, then put on a 30 again, you don't have explain, 60. That doesn't 30. explain why. Like, if they, if your baseline is only at 10, then you should get burnt, but you don't. You can, but not as easily. But you're only at 10. Yeah. It makes sense. Maybe it's less noticeable. Mm. And just for our listeners, there are other, just because in case anyone's interested, there's a couple of other factors that can also increase the risk of skin cancer, which are if you have chronic inflammation from scars, human papilloma virus, HPV, ulcers, radiation, and chronic inflammatory conditions, or you are immunosuppressed. Oh. So if you are any of those, make sure you, I mean, they, they recommend to use SPF like so daily. So are you saying now, if I have sunscreen to offer to everyone? Yeah. 
yeah if you want go for it why were you were you picking and choosing who, uh, <laughs> they don't need it. They're all right. But this is what I because say to this Deb. Is the thing. Deb People works used to outside. offer it to me, and I was always like, I don't need that. Are you crazy? <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, <laughs> to, 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 bring it on. <laughs> to, be honest, to, to be honest, if I had sunscreen, I probably wouldn't offer it to you, but like, he's going to figure I'm an idiot. <laughs> I think that's what guys would do, though, because, they, right, you guys are tradies, and I say to Dev for years, like, you should use skin. Uh, what is it called? Suntan lotion. No, not suntan. Well, that's what we call it in England. What's it called? Sorry. Sunscreen. Yeah. I don't know why we call it suntan lotion in England. You don't want a tan. But they call it sunscreen over here. You want to block it. <laughs> it's like, you want a suntan? Use this suntan lotion. <laughs> I think it's because it's the idea of you'll, if you, you'll get a tan rather than burn rather if than something burn. happens. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So sunscreen. I don't know. I'm yeah um and because you you work outside every day especially in summer and i see no, your he v doesn't. yes i've seen him at work what he's asleep he in the truck <laughs> even in the truck yeah. the uv rays can still penetrate the glass get it no, no one's got his Trucks, blanket on in fact in, inside vehicles can be worse than outside vehicles yeah because you get the arm the arm tan your no, driving arm it becomes a cooker <laughs> doesn't it all got the arm tan. all right now you know protect yeah. yourselves right. strap up Yes, <laughs> slip, slop, slap, as they say in Australia. Australia. That sounds so dirty. Mm. Australia. All right, slap. and uh, I guess thanks for joining us. Thank That's you. another episode. Yeah, it was an inter- interesting podcast today. Yeah. We, we learned about skins, yep. colors, in many, many ways and forms. <laughs> yeah. And giant balls, not balls. Oh yes. giant balls. Yeah, giant balls. What Belgian else did, blues, we, what else did we talk about? Serena. And Serena Williams, huge, huge, big bubbles. And what's the what's Utopia? The, Utopia. We talk about Utopia. Utopia. Belgian bulls. Utopia. Serena I'll be coming, Williams. I'll be coming to your Utopia soon, Siege, just to get some workers for my Utopia. <laughs> Don't worry, they'll be very well paid. <laughs> <laughs> my mate, my, my, hey, if you if you come to my Utopia, you won't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. See you. All. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> yeah.